Well, greetings to you in the name of our Lord Jesus. This is Wise Man Grace, the side proceeding international ministry. Well, well, praise God this glorious morning. I want to talk to some breed. I want to talk to some breed of men and women and honor Christians who have come to comprehend it. It is high time to buckle up their seat belts and tighten it. They have to man up and woman up. I ain't talking about making up your physical features that differentiate you from the female or the male gender. I'm talking about the ability to comprehend the middle line, apprehend it. It is high time you make it up to the Lord Jesus Christ. Every now and then, I ain't talking about perfection, but I'm talking about being a woman or a man after God's heart. You've been lamenting days back, months back, and until you waited for a digit number to change in order to make a resolution. Well, it sounds pathetic to my earrings. That's why I cannot hold myself, but will let my vocal cavity talk to your inner man. That why would you sit back there and wait for a digit to change before you make a resolution? Or before you think it is time you're taking over that which is your own? Or you claim and appropriate that which God said is yours? Why would you wait all the years back until you want to cross over to the other side and you're doing what I call churchiality? Well, I cry because churchianity is creep one the church. It's no more Christianity. We forget that we are dealing with something that is of a high moral standard of discipline. Christianity, discipleship. That is why I came to call somebody's attention, nice Christians. That why you're busy trying to celebrate 2018, the devil is working in your 2030 and 40 and is holding captive your children. Why is he trying to build you? You see how backward you are? Ladies and gentlemen, nice Christians, brothers and sisters, I call you this money by your name that you may become sick and tired and decide to reign. But you cannot reign on, until someone leaves you, until someone paves the way, until someone takes himself or themselves out of your vicinity or your position or your area of discipline. Remember the other day before David had to commence reigning, they, uh, Goliath, the beggar party, had to leave. Someone has to leave for you to reign. In a quote, David said, Who is this uncircumcised Goliath, the van, the armies of the living God? Christians, Regent, bring clues of your pattern of earthly. God needed to accomplish something upon this earth surface that required you, and that is why you're here. You're racing time out, somebody. You're racing time out. And I came to call your attention to the fact that until you diagnose your purpose, You'll just be wasting time. Have you ever walked inside a shop and you're mesmerized and appalled by a product? But upon reaching and touching and trying to grab the product, you find out that no matter how beautiful they look like, they have or they are out of date. 
they are expired and they are not consumed, they cannot be consumed. Some of us are acting in this temporal domicile but we are expired. You need to understand, you need to come to comprehend and apprehend that you are living in a temporal domicile. And this domicile actually has an expiry time. That if you do not do well or do fast, it will expire while you haven't done anything. Acquire and acquire and acquire again because... The cemetery is one of the richest places in the world. Why? Because it's made up of premature dead people. It's made up of kings and queens, princes and princesses who would have made the world become best and better than it is today. Yet the wind on time does not they adore prematurely and they open it either ignorantly or knowing it. Let me tell you, ignorance is not innocence. Just because you're ignorant of something doesn't mean you're in there. Are a lot of ignorant people behind the bars. There are a lot of ignorant people be on in the custody. And they end up even dying. 60% of the people in the prisons of the dungeons sometimes are innocent, but because they were ignorant, people of God. I came that I may talk to someone, and the person may decide this morning. To make it up to God like this, or oh, she's never made it up before. Who is that uncircumcised Goliath, as David referred to the other day, that doesn't want you to make it up in your life? Who is that man born by a woman in the village, in the suburbs there, that is wanting you not to excel? You have to become great. You can't go on and become great until so you've done away with this person I'm talking about. You have no idea, not even a night of how God wants you to excel. That is why you think you are satisfied and contented with your life now. But let me tell you somebody, God needs and want to do something greater in your life than what you think. The question is, are you ready? There is a lot of noise in your inside that is making God's voice not being heard. And I heard the other day some Christians that call themselves complaining. Every now and then the man of God says that God said, how do you hear God? It's very simple to hear. But sometimes we hear God, but because of the noise in the inside, because of what we have become, we were born happy and innocent babies, but look at how we have become. Look at how bad even our smile is fake. Do you remember the other day how innocent your smile was when you were just a few days back onto the earth surface. What has happened to you? What has happened to that good habit of yours? What has happened to that smile God installed in you to light the world? What has happened to me somebody? Well, just like I said some few moments ago, while you're busy trying to celebrate a digit that changed the devil is dealing with the children's children. He's already in 2040 and you're in 2018, marking time, secure quoting, going around and making some resolutions that you should have made donkey years back. 
And you begin to tell yourself that, well, you have more time. Oh, really? Well, at the end of the day, it all depends on your decision, your commitment. Somebody, your spirituality determines your ability to break through every calamity in your vicinity. You can tell that again to yourself. It is how you fed your inner and spirit man that gives it what it takes to appropriate and clean that which has been said, yes, that is yours. Let me tell you. Since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence. And only the violent people, and only those who can cry and lament, obtain it, take it, appropriate it. Claim that which is theirs by what force. You have to come to that point where you deny. You say, devil, I have got a warrant of arrest from the heavens to arrest you today. And to say no more around my vicinity of excel. No more around my family. It took 3,000 men for Saul to go get David. My question to you is how many demons can it take to capture you or to just come around you? Some people, just a fetish demon can begin to make you cry, can begin to make you begin to ooze blow. A fetish demon. And they said it took 3,000 men. Saul needed 3,000 men to go after David. A single man. How many people does it take to come? It all depends on your preparation. It all depends on your plan. Because if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. You waited until the digit wanted to change on 31st December last month before you meet. And I cry even to the men who call themselves men of God that they are busy preaching, they are not teaching. What is the essence of a crusade every now and then on 31st of December? When the people who have not made up your mind, their minds, when you have not taught the people what it's all about. I ask you the question, every year you're crossing over. If you really did cross over in 2017, why must you cross over again this year? With the same man of God. Jesus, help us. The same man of God came to your home and said that in 2016 and said he wanted to cross over with you. Until the 1st of December, breaking first. And 2017, the same, he comes to cross over. 2018, what is this call routine? We have taken the things of the one and brought into the church and God is angry. It sucks. It sucks, people of God, that there is nobody that is looking for to please God. We are doing God things in our own ways, or we are doing our own things in God ways, or in a godly way, but we do our own things. Oh, I heard. Not even crossover. It became takeover. Whether you call it. Whatever you may give the name to it. 
I came to tell you something. If you took over last year, you won't take over again this year. Take over, Jesus takes over once and crosses once. Understanding makes you outstanding. I say it again, understanding makes you outstanding. You have come to live, we are living with a high standard of moral discipline there. We've got to call black, black and white, white in this time. And it's not just more about your call, man of God. Because we've become comfortable in our call. We have decided to stay within the comfort zone, not going out. Because of the anointing upon us. But God is seeking someone after his heart, not just this that he has called. Because we have disappointed him, we have failed him, we have all fallen short of his glory. So God, dear brethren, dear Christians, God is looking for they that are after his heart. I gave it the other day. I came to tell you nice Christian that if you do not fight the battle for your children, they will keep fighting. And the worst pain of a parent or a father, a real father, not an impregnator. A real mother, not a birth canal. A real pain is when you see your child suffering, going through what you went through. Seeing history repeating itself. Have you ever asked the question why a father or mother can decide to give food to the child and better not eat? Because it's better. If you think that what you're going through makes you cry, wait until you watch your child, your progenitors or your great-grandchildren go through the same fire, the same Goliath, the same strong man and wall of Jericho you're going through today. Oh God, I feel chills all over my body as I cry to the world. As I cry for Africa, we have become the way what God means by Christ. Christianity has all been shifted all the way to the left. Well, I am here to say a word to a wise He said, a question in the trade of the 21st century and those who cannot read the Bible and understand or cannot do God's things. But those who have not decided to unlearn the strongholds, how the Bible describes it, the strongholds that is holding them back, strongholds are meant to break you, to hold you captive. The modern man, the modern Christian, Christian man is a prisoner that thinks he is free because he abstains from touching the walls of his dungeon. We are living by the standard of what the world thinks about us. If I do not dress in suit, I'm not a pastor. Oh God, have mercy. If I do not drive in the latest car, I'm not a pastor. If things don't really move, I am not a Christian. But I came to tell you somebody, and listen and listen carefully. Everyone can confess Jesus the Christ. Everyone can say it's God, it's God today and tomorrow. When the children are well behaved, when the salary is well paid every now and then, huge promotion comes riding in the latest cars. Children do what you want them to do. Spouse acts so well, yes. But the real challenge, the real challenge 
It's when things ain't going well. The real challenge is when things ain't moving just like you want or just as you wish or just like you've prayed. Have you cried and cried and prayed and prayed yet things are still the same. Yet I came to tell you that when God opens your eyes, your prayer ain't going in vain in the name of Jesus. You're not even aware of the battles God is saving you out. You know what? Sometimes, have you ever thought what if my great-grandparents had fought the battle? I wouldn't be fighting today. If you do not cross that river for your child, you will lament days ahead to watch them cross that river. Struggle! The pain to call you and say, Mama, I need your help. Mama, I feel the pain. Mama, this is what is going through. And you cannot do anything about it. It is time to do something about it now. The greatest battle is the battle on your knees. What are you waiting for? You've got to tighten your seatbelt. I remember the other day when I bought the aircraft to land in my home country. I used to be down upon the earth surface and watch the sky. And watch the clouds in the sky. And hoping that when shall I reach there. But trust me, the other day when I bought the aircraft and it went thousand feet up in the sky. Guess what? I saw myself upon and on top the clouds that I had once been looking at. I even saw the clouds down. I could see, I could see how the aircraft was breaking through the clouds. I came to tell somebody. In the same way, I stood down there and didn't believe I would go see the clouds. Yet it came upon a time where I broke through the clouds and even saw the clouds down until you were able to climb and God will make a way that you will reach that level that you'll be looking the things that you've been looking of you've been looking it down in the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, tighten your seatbelt, deny to go through the same thing. Cry and tell God that God I want now. Somebody, it is time and it is time. I am talking to your inner man. Feed that inner man that every now and then you may rise up and speak God. Address that enemy, that altar. Speak to that altar. That won't let you rest. There are some forces that won't give up on you. Because they know what you carry. They are aware of what you carry. They know what you, what is inside of you. What has been installed inside of you from the moment you were inside your mother's womb. They know that if they give up on you, you're going to do things. <laughs> and they won't give up. So, you're not supposed to give up. It doesn't matter how many times you have failed, but I came to tell you that a champion is a contender. Or ha has once been a contender, but that did not give up. You don't just wake up and become a champion. Contend for the fact that you may stand to say, God, I give you all the glory. Give you all the praise. It's the end of it. In the name of Jesus. I won't say much. But I came to tell somebody. Buckle up. And rain. It is your time. Do not get expired. Do not let this temporary dumpster expire without you doing anything. Just like you get disappointed to get to the shop and find a very beautiful and great a very beautiful and great product yet while you're checking on the expiry date 
it is expired. You cannot consume it anymore. Somebody, just like I'm trying to change the channel of my TV, change the channel of your life. So that God may be happy to watch. So that Jesus the Christ may be happy to watch that different side of you. Change that channel. Don't get expired before your time. Premature in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, the words I have released today, they are not empty, but accomplish the purpose of the sign. I give you all the glory, Lord, and all the honor. And I cry today and forevermore. That you will break through and lose by grace and by mercy that which is not for me. I plead the blood of Jesus on you, brethren. Everything that you're going through, I plead the blood of Jesus. And I say it is time, break out. Break through and break out. Now, today, and forevermore. In the name of Jesus. It is well. Amen. Clap, shout, and praise God in the precious mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'll be back. Wise Man Breeze reporting Discipleship TV International. See you soon. Remain. Remain and stay connected. Stay tuned. I'll be back. Decide that you won't always wait digits and evaluate that man of God that tells you the cross with him every year. Man of God. Man of God. Listen. It is time you stop the churchiality. It is making the lives of the Christians backward and not moving forward. About that insanity. About that lunacy. And let the Christians rise up. You're looking for, for an army without spot, without wrinkle that can fight and be ready for the devil. And crusades on 31st of December will not help us. And that is why Nigeria has registered a number of deaths of Christians and Christians. Because of, we have got to come to that point where we know that we are dealing with an enemy who is not just an enemy. An intelligent enemy. We've got to stop the churchiality and religious core routines. And make things right. It won't matter how long or how many times you go to church. It won't matter your denomination. What matters is your heart. And how you fight the battle. Stay tuned. Praise God in the name of Jesus. Amen.